Okay, do you know where the onions are? Yeah. Some are back there and some are back there. Okay, let's go straight. What are you looking for? Giant ones. Giant ones? Big daddies. Big daddies. Okay, the big daddy onions. Hmm, those are garlics. Come down here. That's a garlic. Come here. Here we go. You found a big daddy? All right, we'll pull it. Same as last time, too. Big. That's really big. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> All right, you want to go put that big daddy onion on the grill? I just got home from El Dorado visiting my family, and Daniel's here. What's up? Yay. <laughs> we got in town earlier today, and he's going to be spending the weekend with us while we have no kitchen. Uh, he's been out here helping me in the garden get it looking good for a garden tour tomorrow and uh, we're really excited to see him we have yet another person we haven't seen since like the beginning of the year check these out what are those Daniel those are dragon tongue bush veins <laughs> well done young grasshopper <laughs> I was trained well <laughs> And my basil is already starting to try to bolt. It's been so warm this last couple of weeks. When it does this, just pull these flower stalks off. Actually, if you'll harvest your basil, like if you see here where these little armpits are that are growing essentially kind of the equivalent of tomato suckers, if you'll harvest right above that like this, it'll cause your basil to bush out more. So you want to take it down to the top everywhere where it splits and keep it harvested. Like when your basil's growing, if you haven't necessarily got something to use it for, go ahead and harvest it and dry it in your house. Um, just hang it upside down or lay it out on a paper towel to dry. And that way it'll continue to bush and not go to flower. You do not want it to go to flower. Hey Daniel, look at that. That's, that's already my artichoke. That's your artichoke? Oh yeah. God. Oh, hey Daniel, look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can eat it? Yeah. I don't know how good it is after all the rain we've had. It's been kind of sour. That's actually really good. Is it sweet or sour? It's a little sour, but it's mainly sweet. Okay. It's really good. You guys enjoyed Meg Holler being on the garden tour so much. I was telling Daniel I might have him come do some of the video with me in the morning. So I won't show him everything right now so you guys can get his actual response. You got the strawberries, you got the basil. <laughs> now all you need is a lemon tree and you can do strawberry basil lemonade. <laughs> I actually got a lemon tree. Someone sent me a lemon tree last week, a variegated lemon tree. That's amazing. Hey, hey, baby. I'm holding Hey, bear. You tagging along? Been dancing with that onion. My noodle beans have made it to the top. How lovely is that? This is the time of year that the garden is just in her glory. Um, especially this time of day, I come down and it's, it's just so lovely. All right, so I'm gonna share a little bit of a recipe with y'all from my back porch kitchen since I don't have a working kitchen. Um, I've got these cabbages here. You're on a little, shaky table and sorry about that. So these are cabbages which I grew. This is the Cour de Bue cabbage and I picked these the other day actually when Meg was here and I just put it in the fridge because I picked more than we needed for dinner that night and I realized that as I was cooking. So I just stuck them in the fridge. They're still good and crisp and I'm doing the same thing that I did the other day. This was one of my favorite ways to use cabbage anyway but right now when I'm cooking on the grill this is just about as easy as it gets. So the grill is going. Um, I'm actually gonna grill some squash as well. One of the ways we do that with summer squash is just cut it into like spears or slices, olive oil, salt and pepper, put it on the grill. It's so good like that. With the cabbage, also really easy. So I'm using aluminum foil packs. I have no way to wash dishes right now except for my bathtub. So we're gonna go with aluminum foil. And I'm just putting like a little bit of cabbage in each one, like here you can see, a few rings of onions, about a tablespoon of butter, maybe just a little, like a half, I don't know, I'm not measuring it, it's just like a little pat of butter, and some salt. And you can put sugar on this. Um, here in the South, people put sugar on a lot of things you wouldn't think to put sugar on. Um, I don't usually, I have, and it's good, but I think it's just as good with salt, and then you're not eating 
extra sugar. But uh, then you just wrap them up and put them on the grill. Cook them on like medium to low heat for a while. Basically you're wanting them to get steamed in there and soften up and then having a few like browned places is really good so a lot of times what i'll do is i'll put them in on indirect heat while i'm cooking the other things that i'm cooking and then they're towards the end after they've been in for i don't know like 15 minutes or something like that i'll move them over onto the direct heat and give them a little while on that super super yummy okay so we're going down to harvest in the back but i saw this and i just had to show you guys i hope that we can capture this so they're backlit, and so you can actually kind of see. I want you guys to look up here where the trees are catching the bees um, in front of that dark backdrop. Do you see those little flecks of light? So those are the foragers, and they're like flying. They come in and out so fast. Like they just take off and zoom away. They've and you can. be shutting down soon because it's getting dark. Yeah. Hey, Winona girl. Hey, pretty girl. She's looking good. <laughs> All right, Daniel, so the grill is going cool. and we need to harvest the squash and I think we're gonna go ahead and harvest all the squash That's ready because I don't think they got harvested while I was gone because everybody was busy on the kitchen yeah. So there are some massive squash the pigs might get a treat today <laughs> All right, here are the squash rows and There's a lot of squash ready uh, We only have this tiny bucket. It's not gonna be enough there's a lot of squash there. So you got the scissors? And so I'm, I'm like, gonna film and you're gonna cut. Okay. I'll, you won't mess up. There's nothing to mess up here. Okay. After our crazy rain the other day and me being gone for two days, the powdery mildew is back rampant. A viewer told me about a product called Dr. Zymes and I actually ordered some of that and I'm gonna try that on the powdery mildew and see if that knocks it out faster. Otherwise, I'll just continue with the daily diluted milk applications and we should get it back under control. I may prune out a little bit more. Uh, just a couple of days makes such a massive difference this time of year. That's mildew that's on those plants right there, yeah. And so it, it's... I wasn't sure yeah. because it's kind of that whitish color, so I didn't know if that was yeah, like a no. um, So I don't see anything on that one. Okay, so here's one that kind of got away from us. Okay. It's right down in there. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. We've had a couple that were baby size so far. Okay, here's some, these round ones. Now <laughs> these definitely got away and the skin has gotten really hard. So we'll just give those to the pigs. That's the okay. Desi squash. And you gotta pick those young enough that the skin stays soft. We grilled one of those the other day, it was pretty good. That's pretty cool. Is there a massive one over I there? Thought there was two. I okay. thought that was one. Let me like... see, I'll cut these, I'll step over. Some of these plants here are looking pretty bad. Maybe I can bring them back. Oh my golly, that's a good gracious. Yeah, those are, those are pig zucchinis right there. It's a squash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that happens so fast. I looked at these before I went out of town. That's like a couple days. That's crazy. Yeah, just set them down and we'll just kind of survey afterwards. Okay. Here's this. Okay. All right, how about I'll take this side, you take that side. Okay. And that way I don't have to keep climbing over. Awesome. Yeah, this is, <laughs> I know. Hey, Ben, be careful, babe. Just like crawl in You kind of have to be mindful walking through here because what if, you know, snakes or the squash nest monster. <laughs> so the other reason why you have to prune is because like the bees just won't be able to get down in here oh, yeah. like I'm seeing blossoms that look like they dried up and I bet they just weren't pollinated but like look at this leaf they're massive <laughs> I found one there's a little guy down there okay here bucket oh All right, now there's a lot down here on the end on these hybrid plants. Oh, here's a little guy. Oh, and a not so little guy too. So, I don't know if that's still gonna be very tender. That's the uh, yellow patty pan. That one's probably still just right. That's about the size that's that cool. you wanna get these yellow patty pans where they're real still soft. They're so buttery and good. Man. Okay, so these are actually the hybrids over here. And I'm doing some experiments with hybrids this year to see how they do because I do struggle with like squash bugs and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna treat them exactly the same and see 
how they are. So I didn't realize these had started producing. I did not harvest these before I left. And there are some really big squash down here that are gonna have to go to the pigs, I'm sure. <laughs> it's like a secret club under here, a squash club. Yeah, these are, these are actually, the skin is surprisingly soft on these, but I may try to cut one of them open. Here, look at this massive one. Yeah, that's wild. Here, take it. Guys, I just don't think I can convey to you how bizarre this is. This is these are so big. Oh my gosh, I'm out of breath. It's a lot of squash. I'm huh? watching right here. That's good. Do you see those baby watermelons over there? Yeah. All right, so this is all of the squash we just harvested. Some of these got a little bit too big. Um, they may still be edible. I'm gonna try to cook one of them and just see how edible it still is. But we got all of this, these, and then all the green zucchinis from the beginning. Our lawn service is hanging around the back door. What are you girls doing? You're supposed to be mowing. Working hard or hardly working. All right, so I got my foil packs here of cabbage and I just am using this cast iron pan Right now, I'm gonna do the squash this way. I had a little leftover onion, so I put some butter in there with the onion, and I'm gonna turn the heat up under it a little bit. I had it real low. And I'm just curious with these squash, and I cannot remember the name of these right now, but I will double check it and let you know. It's from Haas Tools. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but I'm curious how good this, this is the biggest one, probably weighs about two pounds, and I'm gonna see cutting into it if it's still edible. All right, so how I normally do this. I'll go fill it up. Well, there is ice in there, I'll go fill it up. Nope, oh, it's actually not terrible. All right, so here's the inside. I would say you could definitely eat this. It's softer than I expected, but it's starting to get kind of that spongy texture and the seeds are actually pretty big. So this is not ideal, but you could still eat it. Um, this, this, is, this is tough, this is not very, um, soft now this is softer than like I have the patty pans when they're this size I mean you're not gonna get your nail through the skin of them so it's a little softer than that definitely could eat this middle part if you wanted to but not ideal we are not gonna eat this I'm just gonna give it to my pigs it'll make them happy we just have so much squash right now and without having the kitchen there's only so much of it that we can use hopefully we'll have the kitchen up and running again by the time like the squash should still be producing them. And so I'll have a plenty of opportunity to make squash relish and can other things. So as of right now, these ones that got too big, they're going to the pigs. Daniel's showing the kids his, uh, <laughs> his damage from his wreck. It actually looks way better than I thought it would. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty gnarly scar, but the fact that you're like not in a cast, I guess that's what happens when you get a bunch of metal plates put in your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Many of you know this, but Daniel was in a very bad car accident. It was more than a month ago. What day was it? <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's like six weeks. Like six weeks ago. He was in a really bad car accident um, and broke his right arm. All right, so here's my squash. I just put it on this pan and cooked it over the flame. This is a gas grill. I actually prefer a charcoal grill but we have both and I'm using the gas a lot while the kitchen's torn apart. And then here I just opened up this cabbage and you can kind of see what it looks like. It's good and soft with a little bit of color and that is just right right there. Now the ones that were over the heat look a little bit better. These need a little more direct heat because they are soft but they don't have any color on them. A little trip. What do y'all think of our no kitchen dinner? Pretty good. Shoot, if we're gonna feed me like this all the time, I'm gonna never build a Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Look how funny Jeremiah's joke is. Kitchen's done. Hey, so like, we can turn that into like a playroom. <laughs> With water, like a water thing, or like a, you know, splashing everywhere. Well, we're gonna get to this dinner. Uh, you get the kids out here, it's gonna get really loud. Thank you guys for hanging out with us this evening. We bless you. Until next time.